Introduction to Computer Science with Python, Python Random. Python has built-in standard library modules that you can easily import and use. Remember import turtle? Yes, the turtle library is a module. By importing turtle, we're able to use the built-in functions to control the turtle and do all sorts of fun stuff. In this lesson, we'll import the random module and use the functions that will help us solve some challenges. But first, let's try answering this question. Is random really random? For instance, is the random feature on your music playlist really random? It may appear random, but after playing the list in random mode many times, you might start noticing patterns. If there exists an algorithm or a formula to generate randomness, can it be truly random? This is a question that computer scientists have been trying to tackle for ages by creating random number generators. The quality of the random number generator is measured by its unpredictability. This is an important field of research because random number generators are used extensively to secure the internet by encrypting important data such as passwords and credit card information. From adding randomness to make fun games to securing data, random is widely used. Next, let's look at some challenges we can solve using the random module. Challenge one, it's game night. Oh no, we're missing the dice. No worries, let's use the random module to create a virtual die. We'll need something that will return a random number from one to six inclusive. Let's visit the documentation page to find what we need. At first, this page may seem overwhelming. However, you'd be surprised how much you are able to understand it after we do some lookup exercises. Here, we'll look at the functions provided by the random module. We need a function that will give us an integer between one and six. Randint function looks useful. Here's the description of the function. Random.randint a comma b takes a and b. The variables a and b here are called parameters. Randint takes two parameters a and b, then returns or gives back a random integer n such that n is between a and b inclusive. Now let's use randint to create the virtual dice program. To use the random module, simply import it. Make sure to insert the import line at the top of your code. Next, use randint function and set the range. Since we need the range to be from one to six, pass one comma six. This will produce a random number in the range one to six. We can even make this into a 12 sided die. Replace six with 12. Next, print it. Now that's going to make the game even more interesting. Challenge two, we need to pick a raffle winner. The random.choice function looks useful. According to the documentation, this function takes one parameter of a sequence type, such as a list, and returns or gives back a random element from the given list. The description also warns us that if the list is empty, then it'll throw an index error. So when using this function, we need to make sure that the list is not empty. We'll learn about how to work with the lists in the later unit. Let's code. Import random. Next, create a list of participants. Next, pass the list participants to random.choice. Then print it. Ta-da, congratulations, Serena won the raffle. Challenge three. Ms. Garcia's class will be presenting tomorrow. Ms. Garcia needs to come up with the presenter order for her class. Let's help her out by creating a shuffled list. There must be something useful in the library. And here it is. The shuffle function will do the job. Random.shuffle takes two parameters. It shuffles the given list X in place. One thing to note here is that the second parameter is an optional one as indicated by the brackets. Also, Here's another important information. According to the last line in the description, the second optional parameter is deprecated and will no longer work with the newer version of Python. Great to know. The documentation saved me from creating an outdated code that might blow up with Python version upgrades. Let's code. Import random. Next, create a roster list. Let's shuffle the roster. Pass the roster to random.shuffle and print it. After executing this, the original list is altered, and it looks like Renee is presenting first. What's neat about using these modules created by others is that we don't need to know how it works and still be able to use it 
just by calling its name. So as long as we know what it does, there's no need to know how it does its job. This is called the procedural abstraction. And the documentation site is where you can look up the instructions for using these modules.